Hello Prevo owners and fans. My name is Barry and this is my 1998 Prevo Royal Coach. What's going on Barry? How you doing man? Thanks for being here again. Absolutely, appreciate you having me. I appreciate you letting us spend a few minutes in your, uh, in your beautiful 98 Coach. Uh, you're here at the shop today for a couple quick quick little service items all, while you're all on your way to a trip. Where are you guys heading? Headed to the World Equestrian Center in Ocala. Uh, we, we love spending time there. It's a really beautiful place. Lots to do, lots to see, and uh, enjoy some relaxed time over there. Yeah. How, uh, I want to talk more about this coach specifically a little bit later on, but how did you end up in the, in the Prevo world? Uh, did you grow up camping? Did you grow up RVing? How, how did you end up uh, in, a, in a Prevo uh, at this stage of your life? Yeah, so I uh, grew up doing a lot of tent camping. Grew up in the Four Corners in New Mexico, Colorado area. Nothing but tent camping growing up. And then uh, a little bit later in life, when my grandfather passed, we ended up taking his motor home in and doing a little travel that way in that motor home. And I've always had a, a passion for it since since that time. And I um, was fortunate enough to uh, to work when I, where I'm at today. And, and um, I, I knew I wanted to be in a Prevo, ultimately just doing research on the, on the Internet and the ride. and and uh, the stability of the coach is where I wanted to be. What was that first coach, your grandfather's coach? It's a Pace Arrow, I think, uh, I can't remember the year, but yeah, an old Pace Arrow coach. So. And then when, when we first met you, you were in a 94 Liberty. Was that, did you go from the Pace Arrow to the Liberty or was there anything in between? Nothing in between, so a lot of years in between the Pace as well. So I probably got rid of the Pace in 2002, 2003 timeframe. Haven't had a motorhome since we went um, to a travel trailer and to a little uh, aluminum built travel trailer that uh, we designed and, and had built and we're in that for about a year and a half and then got into the Liberty coach and then from the Liberty to this one. And you were in the Liberty for about a year or was it less than yeah, that? A little less than a year. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Uh, obviously the, the 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 lifestyle has suited you all your life as far as camping and RVing and things like that. Um, what led you to go from the what are some of the things that led you to go from that 94 Liberty to this to this 98 Royal that you purchased, I guess, just a few months ago from us? Yep, good question. So I think uh, the, the extra room, I think, is number one. Um, going from the 8V92 to the Series 60 was huge. And I think another thing for us, at least living in Florida, the cruise air system to a roof air, I think that was a, a last big thing for us. We had some trouble with the uh, cruise air systems, and so the, the roof air has been a little bit more suitable for us. Yeah. And... You're, you're a relatively young guy still, um, in, especially in this world, but really in all, in all industries at this stage. Um, your, your ability to use the coach now, how often are you able to use it? I, I know you're still working. Um, what's, your, what's kind of your, your work-life Prevo balance at this stage of your life? Good question. So I'd say probably two times a month. So we try to do at least two weekends a month, I'd say, in the coach. Um, sometimes it's more, sometimes it's less, but I'd say we average at least two. Um, I, you know, part of buying a coach like this was to make sure it didn't sit. So it was uh, it kind of we, we talked through, and it was at least a once a month trip. Um, but we've had, uh, thankfully, a lot of ability to, to do multiple weekends. And so we did uh, Camp Margaritaville last weekend for the, the holiday, and then now going up to World Equestrian Center and back to back weekends. So we get away when we can, but I'd say an average of two times a month or so. What's the uh, what's the longest trip you've been on in either this bus, either this this Prevo or your Liberty? Obviously, I know you're I know you're working and kind of doing things in between. What's the longest time you've been able to to, to been? What's the longest time you've been able to break away? <laughs> Probably about five days, honestly, is yeah. about it for now. So we'll have a little bit longer trip coming up. So we're gonna do uh, the basically Merritt Island area to Orange Beach, and then Orange Beach to New Orleans, New Orleans to Biloxi, and then back to Orange Beach, and then back home to. The Merritt Island area, so that'll that'll be uh, J January tenth through sixteenth time frame, sixteenth, gotcha. seventeenth, something around there. That'll right around a week. That'd so. be a good trip. Yeah, you own out in Orange Beach now, right? I do. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Buena Vista Motor, uh, Buena Vista RV Coach and Resort, whatever it is out there. That you said, I believe you said when we talked off camera that was uh, relatively, it was a newer resort, right? And kind of in the process of being built. It is. So they had a phase one and phase two complete when I when I purchased, and now they've done a phase three, four, five. And then that completes the entirety of the, the whole RV resort there. But, yeah, it's just right across from the, um, the Gulf and the nice beach view and very pretty area. I got gotcha. you. Very cool. Um, 
going back to, to a little bit more of the, the work life personal balance that, that, you, that you're maintaining now, um, you've got a couple kids still, um, relatively young kids still in school, I believe, right? Yep. Um, how has, you know, people, people see these buses going down the road. Obviously, the, the, the general uh, public probably thinks that it's not the normal, <laughs> average, everyday person with a regular job, still working with kids that, that's in one of these things. Um, what would you say to somebody who is trying to get to that lifestyle, that's trying to, that wants to own one of these things one day, but doesn't ever see how it, how it could be possible financially? Yeah, it's, a, it's a great question to, um, you know, for me, it's been a lot of years uh, working in what I do. I'm a, a CFO of an engineering company and um, family owned business at the time. It's, it's no longer that today, but a lot of hard work, a lot of, a lot of years, um, you know, put the, the children first and, and raise them to the age they are today. And for us, it was more about, um, you know, I guess some financial stability and, and saving for retirement, but also enjoying some along the way. So I think uh, we, we take our kids on a lot of trips. So we do, you know, individual trips as well and, and trips with our kids too. But, uh, you know, I, I think it is a, it is a lifestyle that it, it can be affordable if you, if you save right and, and um, also know that, um, you know, part of my goals are to pass some money down to my kids at some point in time, but also to use it along the way and enjoy it. So that's part of getting into the Prevo was enjoying the time along the way too, enjoying sure. the memories with the kids and enjoying time with the family. and. So it was the investment in the time and memories as well. Yeah, I'm sure your I'm sure your kids will they'll remember the times in the pace arrow and they'll remember <laughs> the if the in the fifth wheel and in the the any of the experiences that you've got that you've been able to take them on. I'm sure they'll remember those forever. So that's that's really Absolutely. cool. Um, how long have you been in the in the industry in the position that you're in? So I came in uh, into this industry in 2004. So I've been doing that for basically 20 years now. Um, prior to that, I did government accounting and auditing tax those types of things so kind of stepped into from away from the auditing tax world and came into the government contracting world and into the engineering we do um, probably 75 to 80 percent of our our business today is in the government space mm. so um, and then uh, a little bit of commercial work dabbed into that so about about two decades now I gotcha uh, one of the things that you know I have the I have the privilege of getting to meet and experience a lot of different people from a lot of different walks of life um, as a relatively young guy myself, young kids um, at home, um, what's what's one piece of financial advice that you would give, not necessarily to me, but anybody kind of in my position um, that, that would one day like to be able to be in a financial position that you're in um, and, and own one of these things and be able to break away and go on trips and spend some time in it? So uh, That's a wonderful question. <laughs> Put me on the spot. Um, you know, I'd say probably the, the best thing I would say to do is, is um, you know, really save hard, um, spend what you need to, and, you know, refrain from debt. You know, I think that's a, it's a huge thing in society today. A lot of people want to rack up credit card debt and do those things, but I think it's, it's a balance of spending and enjoying time. And um, so I did some, some saving along the way to, to get to this position today and, and maybe had some years where I didn't spend as much. So I had the opportunity to do that a little bit now. So, um so I think uh, once you accumulate a little bit of money, I think you, you've got to invest it wisely and, and probably not just let those assets sit. You know, find the right investment team that can can work with you on the right investment opportunities and, and help the money grow as well. And not to get too deep into you know your situation specifically, but obviously, I, I being that you bought this bus from us, I I know that you are I don't want to say against debt, but you don't necessarily like to leverage debt for fun anyways because I know I know how you purchased this bus and, and it wasn't that way so that makes a lot of sense um, similar question on the on the personal side of things on you know father to father man to man from a from a fathering standpoint of kids um, would would be a piece of advice to give to somebody that wants to wants to work hard you know sometimes we work long hours you know <laughs> yeah, um, how do you how do you balance that going back and forth and and how do you uh, what would be a piece of advice as far as just raising kids in general in, in today's today's day and age it's it's different than when I was a kid <laughs> different than when you were a kid so it is it is very different you know I think that's a that's a, a piece that that uh, we talk about a lot you know it's very different from when I grew up um, you know I think society pressures of social media those types of things are very different today um, 
but I think father to father, I, I you know I got my kids actively involved in sports at a young age and coached and did all those types of things and it was very involved and still am today with my kids as as it uh, as it stands today. Um, sports in my life too. I mean, I'm I'm the oldest of four. I have three younger sisters and I grew up baseball, football, anything anything we could as we were growing up and. My younger sisters were the same way, whether it be gymnastics, uh, softball, volleyball. They were all they were all in the same thing. And although I would always, uh, growing up, I would always give my give my wife a little bit of a, of a hard time telling, <laughs> which I know that it is. But my two daughters are are heavily involved in in dance uh, now at their age, um, and and it's uh, I think it's it's a great discipline. Any any sport, anything that they that they have a, a routine and a schedule that they're going to and they're accountable to not only their coach or their teacher, but they're also accountable to their colleague, you know, their, their colleagues, their, their friends, you know, one person messes up, it, it hurts everybody. So I think that's, I think that's great for, for kids growing up for sure. No, absolutely. My, my daughter's a senior this year and, and softball has been a huge piece of her life. And um, she's played since six years old, and she's not going to play in college, but wants to focus on education from there. But it's been a huge, I think, influence on her life, giving her confidence. I think it's helped build her, uh, you know, to understand she's capable and, and has good good abilities and those types of things. And I think as a father-to-father -father type of advice, I, I think a, a piece of advice I heard a long time ago is a work-life harmony. You know, it's a, sometimes your personal life is going to take more mm -hmm. than your than your work life. Sometimes your work life is going to take more than your personal life. And so sometimes as a, as a father, you'll have, you know, that personal time that takes more than, than what your work life can give. And then, you know, the work life sometimes will take more than what your personal life can give. And so I think it's not necessarily a work life balance as much as it is a harmony at some point, you know, I and mean, sometimes takes one takes more than another and you've got to kind of have those give takes there. So got to hundred percent sometimes it's not always 50 50 it's 60 40 yep. it's yep. <laughs> 70 30 it makes sense yeah it makes a lot of sense um kind of getting back into into the coach into the prevo conversation um you've owned this bus for only a few months now like we discussed um what if any are some of the things that you are hoping to do want to do in the future to this bus yeah that's a good question so i think we like the bus overall as it sits. Um, there are a couple of things I think with the valances above the above the windows, get rid of some of the floral I think and go to a little bit more modern um, piece in that. So I think that's that's one one component that would be good. Um, maybe update some of the the handles and doorknobs and stuff on cabinets that maybe are a little bit dated with the old brass kind of look and maybe a little bit more modern style on those. Um, but other than that, we we like the coach overall pretty well. So. I think those are just maybe some styling updates to the interior just to give it a little bit more refresh, a little bit more modern look. I got you. And we will uh, we will have a video tour of this coach um, kind of at the end of this video here. We'll do a walkthrough and show you guys the interior of it and and, uh, and what Barry uh, what Barry's coach looks like now. And then maybe uh, down the road, if they do do some of those updates, we can do an update video as well and just show you the, the changes that, that have been made. Um, we have a pretty extensive history with this bus from the previous owner working on it for them maintaining it for them we did a lot of the upgrades in here several years ago so um kind of going back to comparing this to your last coach i, I personally think you guys made a, a great decision uh, coming into this bus has not only a lot of the things that you talked about as far as the engine being the little bit more desirable uh detroit series 60 versus the av92 um, the ac system in it cruise air versus roof air um, the dash ac system in it our 134 <laughs> versus 12. So there's a there's a there's a, a lot of changes between the between Prevo as a whole between 94 and, and, and 98 for sure. So um, I, I personally believe you guys made a good decision coming into this bus. Um, hopefully you'll hang on to this a little bit longer than <laughs> nine, 10, 11 months, however long the Liberty was. But I, but, I think but so. you never know. <laughs> True. I think it's uh, the, the Liberty was a good coach to learn on. Right. It was a an investment to get into Prevo world for the first time and and um, learn a little bit about them, you know, and understand what we wanted a little bit more in the next coach. And uh, like you said, Dash Air was was huge. That was not in the prior coach. And I, I'd say one other thing we like about this is the the independent front suspension as well. So definitely notice a little bit more ride ride difference than the other coach too. So for sure. Well, I uh, I appreciate you spending some time with us. Thank you very much yeah. for uh, allowing us to to intrude and and ask you a few questions and take a walkthrough of your bus. Absolutely. Um, what's, what's 2024 look like for you? Do you have any, any 
goals, plans with the bus? Not not personally, but just with the bus. Uh, are there certain milestones, uh, certain trips you want to take, a certain amount of time that you hope to spend in the bus? So I think there's probably no no set amount of time. Uh, we're going to do a, a July trip to Rock the South in Alabama, so a big concert that we do. And uh, so we'll drive that up to, to probably Orange Beach and then up to Coleman and do that for a Wednesday through Sunday. Um, so we kind of take the, the half weeks or weekends when we can get them. Ultimately, at some point in time, as, as uh, maybe our jobs slow down and it's not quite as quite as heavy in that aspect, we'd like to do a longer road trip, you know, through the Midwest and up into the West and uh, eventually up to Alaska, you know, do a month-long trip or so. Um, not sure that's probably 2024, but maybe into 2025. So I think it's just uh, keep using it the way it is and, and not let it sit. I think that's the best for us. And you know, the, the investment was to build the memories and enjoy the, the experiences mm -hmm. along the way. So I think that's, that's the goal is to keep using it. Long term, what will, whether it's this bus or another bus, long term, what do you hope uh, what do you hope the Prevo brings to you in your life, I guess, if that, if that kind of makes sense? Do you, do you hope to retire and spend, you know, go full-time in it, spend months at a time in it? What, what would be perfect for you sitting here today? Obviously, things can change tomorrow, but... Yeah, ultimately, I think uh, retirement is, is where we want to be, and I think looking at um, maybe a, a place that's got a casita with a little bus pad next to it, and then we can go and spend months on the road if we want to, and then ultimately return to the casita and have our kids join us if they want at the, the little house slash casita on the pad. They can come and, come and join and have fun and spend time with, with kids. And But yeah, I think eventually full-time, you know, full-time ish in the bus and then come back when we want to you know, have the space with the, with, the, with the kids and other family, I think is ultimately our goal. Which I'm sure they'll, uh, I'm sure they'll, they'll want to break away from, from college from time to time <laughs> and, and uh, come and, and relax in the bus too. So that'd Absolutely. be a great spot for them. So. Any any final thoughts? Again, I appreciate your time. Any any final thoughts about about the bus, about life, anything in general? I, I would just say that um, you know this has been an adventure. It's been um, you know everything I thought it would be, you know, and everything that that, that we hoped it would be, and it's been a lot of t a lot of fun. We we talk all the time on the road about you know the the adventures we've been on, the adventures we look forward to going on, and um, it was the right move for us, and you know I think it we enjoy the road so we, we'd rather be on the road and seeing the countryside than being in an airplane sometimes so um, ultimately it was, it was a great move and we look forward to what this coach brings and, and potentially maybe down the road another coach and, and um, we'll definitely I'm sure see you along the way for <laughs> upgrades and, and maintenance and, and everything you guys do and appreciate your service and helping that too. Well absolutely I'm very thankful and appreciative of, of our you know conversation of our relationship both personal and uh, and from a business side of things. So again, appreciate your appreciate your time and, and allowing us to, to be in here and spend, spend a few minutes with you. You bet. All right, Prevo owners and fans, there you have it. That was a conversation with Barry. Um, and please stay tuned for a walkthrough tour of his 90, 1998 Prevo Royal Coach. Please uh, like this video, subscribe to the channel. And if there's anything in particular that you wanna see, let us know. Thank you.